You teach uh, couples how to lead with God and, and stay together. You have a podcast that you review all these things. What is, what is the things that you are troubled with now that like that are on your heart that weighs on you and that you feel like this is this is my I'm at a different level and this is the different devil that I'm dealing with. So I've been really wrestling in terms of the the cultural the Christian cultural zeitgeist, if you will, of there being an incongruence, a breakdown, a double mindedness, a, a syncretism of the things we claim to believe and then like people really living out the things we claim to believe. And so I'm, I'm packaging that right now. I'm finishing my first book and it's basically about this concept of godly ambition and how it's different from worldly ambition or selfish ambition, right? So the scriptures talk about make it your ambition to lead a quiet life working with your own hands um, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and you may not be dependent on anyone. That's First Thessalonians 4.11, right? Well, wow, that's strong. <laughs> strong, right? Make that it is, your it, ambition to lead a quiet life. Ah, so you're chasing the fact that you're scared that the voices and the comments and the concerns are going to dictate where you're going to go? Yeah, because if you just live for the for the pleasure of man and, and, the, and the expectations of man, like that can derail you. And, and, no, this and, is real yeah. because you want to do God's job and you not not his job, but you want to do what he wants you to do. Yeah. And sometimes you feel like you, you got to try so hard, but you, you slip in and out of like listening to what they're with good intentions. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you want to provide a product for yeah. them. Yeah, you want to listen to what your audience yeah, has to say. Yeah yeah yeah. 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 Okay. So how are you dealing with that? Well, I'm dealing with it by programming and, and trying to walk people through programming. And this is this is what I mean very practically. What we believe will determine how we behave, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is unanimous across area. Like if we believe, if I believe I'm an athlete, I'm going to create systems in my life like ordering meal preps that come to my house to make sure I hit my macros, like building a gym in my backyard to make sure I could always hit the gym, like be, doing the things that an athlete does through the processes, right? I believe I'm an athlete because I've played sports my whole life. Therefore, I've created the, path, the processes and the systems. Therefore, eventually, I will get the outcomes that, I, that an athlete gets, right? This is, a lot of this is from the book Atomic Habits, but I think he misses the faith component in all this, right? He misses the belief component in all this. And so for me, so many people say they're a child of God. They say they're born again. They say they're a follower of Jesus. They say they're a Christian. But when it comes to the nitty gritty of like, how do you care for your body? How do you manage your finances? Are you generous? Like, are you, how is your marriage? Who are you when no one is around? There's a massive disconnect for people. And so I'm, I'm trying to create a framework for people through my own shortcomings and my own mistakes of like, hey, stop chasing the outcomes. Like stop chasing the number on the, on the, on the scale if you wanna get fit. Stop chasing the body fat percentage if you wanna get fit. Chase falling in love with the process of fitness because you actually believe that you are an athlete. And the same thing with being a child of God. Like if I'm actually declared the righteousness of God, right? Second Corinthians 5.12, it says, um, I think it's 5.12, it says, God made him who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God, right? So meaning that if you're in Christ, God sees you and you are now proclaimed to be the righteousness of God, that we're all called to be a part of a royal priesthood, that we're no longer sinners, we're saints. So if we really believe these things about ourselves and we really believe like the full counsel of God, that means that we will incorporate this and you will know them by the fruit. All our lives will change. Not in the sense of salvation. I'm not talking about like, hey, if you misstep, you're just going to hell. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in the sense of being the hands and feet of Jesus here and now. There's never been a time like this, George, where we can do so much good. We can help so many people. We can get the word out, but we could also be the tangible hands and feet of Jesus as right now, as this time that we're in. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just really like, I'm concerned that Christians either don't get it or they're chasing selfish ambition, worldly ambition, or they're, or, or they're engulfed in the poverty gospel. And, they, and there's an there's a, there's a incompatibility from the things we say we believe and the willingness to create the systems to behave that way. I, I, I've pondered this thought and what I've came to, like my conclusion is, and I could be completely wrong, there's two men I, I only see there's one who is broken and there's one that's so broken that he calls out to God. Come on. I had this 
really hard time I would judge a lot of people because I would have been like I would learn from something and then I'll be like well why don't you yes, get yeah, and yeah. so what happens with people that have God in their life and they're obviously seeing him work is that they become spoiled to his wisdom mm -hmm. and to his grace and mm -hmm. to his faith that they feel that why are you guys not the, the truth is when a man is broken and he gives it all to God, it's God himself that starts making heaven on earth and then you see his fruits. That's why they say you'll know him by his fruits because God's fruits is undeniable, right? I have to realize that life and death begins on a tongue. So if I want to convert this man into literally walking in the direction that I want to walk, it's coming to the realization to myself that it's not me who changes these people. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a really hard pill to swallow because I thought, oh, I'm doing this for God. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this for God. But the truth is it's the Holy Spirit. That's right. And if, if they're not like submitting to the Holy Spirit, we can never get them to even experience the Holy Spirit. Now I see people that are in church that have no Holy Spirit. And then I see people that know, I have no idea what the church is, but have the Holy Spirit because they're, I could tell them by their fruits. So what I do now is I'm trying to get out of my own way because I feel like I have to get the job done. And I think that's what you're kind of on the way of. And this will tear you up from the inside out mm -hmm. because if it was going to be done, it would have been done. Mm -hmm. But we have to literally humble ourselves and this is what I've been in my head. I keep telling myself, preach all the time, every day, always about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when it's very necessary, use words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. And I think what we, we, you, we, you articulated so well, I think there's a difference between salvation and justification, like we're being saved, which is, which is anchoring on the good news. You know, Jesus came, lived the life we couldn't live, died to death we should have died on the cross in our place for our sins, and then created a pathway. That's you're, you're spot on about that. And then there's the second aspect of that, which is we we would call sanctification. Yeah. And sanctification is like that cooperation with the Holy Spirit, right? You know yeah. the things you should be doing, but you're not doing them. And I so I think what I'm getting at, I think, is like there's a there's people that say they want to cooperate with the Spirit, yeah. but they're either ignorant of the ways of God, and so then they're wondering why they they they, they don't feel like they're in the will of God. It's like, well, would you find it to be ignorance or fear? I think it's both. I think it's I think that's a great question. Oh, okay, great. So you think that their ignorance led them to fear? I think, or 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 their fear keeps them from wanting to learn more about the ways. Okay, let's break this down because it says that wisdom is uh, in the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So they're fearing worldly things, making them technically dumb mm -hmm. and caught in their cycle of life. Mm -hmm. But then when you fear the Lord, then you become wise and you could delegate those problems with faith instead of fear. That's right. All right. Okay, so then what do we do? Do we more install faith or do we... I think it starts with faith. Right, right? it has to. I think to. it has to start with faith, right? You Like if I, when I was struggling, uh, I came off a tour in 2018. I was like 20 pounds heavier, not good, addicted to sugar, just wilding. I had to believe that like my buddies who had abs and when they tell me like you got to eat chicken and broccoli and go do compound lifts... Like I had to believe them, <laughs> right? And what is belief? Like belief is trust and confidence that what they're saying is true, Yeah. right? So I had a little bit of faith that like, all right, I'm going to go do these deadlift squats, bench press and pull-ups. I'm going to go learn this and I'm going to eat my ideal body weight and chicken and the broccoli to keep me satiated. And I did it and I did it for a couple months and all of a sudden I was like, oh snap, like I got muscles all of a sudden. I got abs. Like this is crazy. But I first had to believe it before I actually tea. implement it. You know, and I think there's a lot of folks that either don't know or don't want to know or afraid, and then they're, they're staying stuck in that cycle. And again, they're wondering, like, why do I feel like I'm not in the will of God? Mm. And it's like, well, the will of God isn't a destination. The will of God isn't this thing you land at. Like, the will of God is in the ways of God. If I'm living God's ways, I will always be in God's will. Right and God's ways are in God's word, and, and ultimately Jesus Amen. is the word of God. Jesus is the logos. He became flesh, John one. Yeah, but there's the proverbs, and there's Ecclesiastes, yeah. and there's the parables, and there's the the epistles, and there's the Old Testament. And there's there's so much wisdom in there, and we're like, why why am I why don't I feel like I'm in the will of God? It's like, well, 
because you're not really after the ways of God and you're not really cooperating with the works of the spirit. And so then you'll wonder why there's this cognitive dissonance, why there's this tension in your life. And and, and not all tension is bad to, to, to go in. Tension is great. That's how you built that body. You right. Put tension, your body through tension. Tension's good, especially in strength training mm. and tension is necessary. But the, the tension of, I want to be in this area of breakthrough, but I'm disconnected. I, I don't know why I'm disconnected. And I think getting people back to like a practical wisdom. Like we could talk about the supernatural, which I'm all for, but my friend, Pastor Mike Signorelli says, but we have to bring people into a super practical, right? From the supernatural, there's a super practical. God has an opinion and not just an opinion. God has commands for a lot of the areas of our lives that we're just kind of checked out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the discipline, the discipline is a byproduct. Like the dis, like it's not about white knuckling it. It's about creating a process and a system that then over time, the discipline just becomes who you are. You know, like I, I get up and I do things not out of dis. I don't brush my teeth out of discipline. <laughs> you just brush my teeth. I don't even think about it. Yeah. It's you know, habit. Yeah. It's, you know, and I think too, with a lot of people and it's hard to want to change and to know that you're going to have to change. And I think that sometimes when you're collecting all this new information, you know, you're about to read information on the ways that like you're going, like that you're doing wrong. And you know, you're about to have to change things and change things about yourself. And that's a hard thing to do, you know? And, um, actually I saw you, you there was a clip of you and you were speaking on, um, Kate Von D when she got mm -hmm. baptized and yeah. she was speaking about how her comment section was, you know, it was so like negative and it was so holier than thou by Christians. And I really agree with like what you said in the ways that like us as Christians, we shouldn't be in the comment section judging. And if you feel like the person might not be on the right track, I don't know why I, and I see this so much in the, in comments where Christians are like, you know, talking down to other Christians being like, well, you're not doing this or you're not a real Christian or you're not, you know what I mean? I don't think that your actions don't seem like you're this or that or whatever. And it's like, we should be giving each other so much grace because it's, you don't know where that person is in their walk. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember that this person is brand new to the relationship with Jesus. So they're not going to have everything figured out. They're not going to know exactly how to go about it. But if we're encouraging and if we give with like, right, like love and with grace, then we're only encouraging the person to step further into it versus like being so harsh on them. And then they're like, okay, well, I don't even want to read it. I don't even want to start because I know I have so much work to do. Yeah. And I think yeah. that sometimes that can be so discouraging to yeah. want to work on yourself. Yeah. I mean, I, I think social media Christians are some of the harshest, toughest people to appease. And so it's like, you almost just got to have boundaries in the army of God. We, we do a terrible job of sometimes shooting our own and not getting a healthy gauge of like, where is someone on this journey? Like, what? Right. And, and, and am I judging superficially? Right. Like what she's awesome. Like have is awesome. Mm. But were people were judging because like she wears black, like mm -hmm. she really wears black and she like, she's in a transition in her life. She, yeah. she came from one area and now she's right. coming to a completely different area right. in her life. That's right. going to take some time. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. And she's a sweetheart. I, I love what her and her husband are doing. Yeah. A lot of people um, are so concerned of what other people think. And I think if you just really focus on how Jesus sees you, you really don't care what other people say about you. Um, and I think the cool kid in school was always the kid that didn't care what you thought. Mm -hmm. And I think people will have to like kind of grow into this mentality. And, and don't forget, just because somebody says that they're Christian doesn't mean they're Christian. They could be a wolf disguised as a sheep mm -hmm. trying to tear our own people down, right? So I don't even want to shine too much light on those people because one, if they are Christian, then they're definitely broken. We should pray for them. And then two, uh, I, I'd rather focus on the positive. There was obviously so many good comments. I could go through my feed and look at bad comments, but I'd, I love looking at the good ones and seeing what I'm doing. I think you just need to fix your focus.